mountains were born, or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant. The Lord has sent me to comfort all the more. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. The word of the Lord.
that Papa exudes infinite love and gratitude. Such truth to both statements. John Beagle was born on the family farm near Blue Sky on May 21st, 1927. He always said that he was a Mayflower. <laughs> Dad's parents, Charles and Margaret Beagle, had eight children, with Dad being the second oldest. Dad was involved with the, with the Knights of Columbus, was on the co-op board, Grain Growers Association board. Dad also worked through the winter months for a few years at the Fairview College as a custodian. And I could go on and on and on, but that's not what made our dad the special man he was. We want to share with you the most important part of our dad, depicting his life through his beautiful and radiant spirit. Dad attended Craddock School up until grade seven and then continued at Friedenstahl School, at the same time helping his dad on the family farm. His love for music started at the young age of eight years when he was inspired to play violin by his uncle Joe Becker. Dad told me an interesting and unique story about heading into the bush on the farm one day and he found a willow branch and a piece of string and made his own violin. Well, when he ran to show his mom Oma, she could see that John's Christmas present that year was ticked off her list. And a few months later, our dad's first violin arrived from the Eaton's catalog. And the love of the violin, harmonica, piano, and guitar continued on for the rest of his life all which was self-taught. There was nothing more beautiful than harmony. That harmony sure does fit in. Dad took his last couple years attending school in Friedenstahl and worked for Father Wagner, making ice, chopping wood, etc. It was in Friedenstahl where he first laid eyes on a sweet, sweet young cook named Irene Bowles, who was at the time serving food to the workers. And she was very shy, so she would hide behind a post and steal glances at John. <laughs> Irene was and is and still an incredible baker with many other talents and as pretty as they come. And Dad had a super sweet, sweet tooth. Well, it just so happened that Dad would sneak in the dining room and kitchen area a few more times a day as the days went on. Yeah. It was truly love at first sight, and before you knew it, Dad was driving to Nauticuan to visit Irene, usually once a month. Dad would say, I drove 80 whole miles to see Mom, usually once a month. I know that Mom saw Dad's kind and sensitive heart from the get-go. I remember as a child seeing Dad down on his knees, cleaning his mother's feet, clipping her toe, toenails, and cutting out her corns. He cared, loved, and respected his mom, no matter what her needs were. Mom and Dad marry about, after about two years of dating at the Friedenstall Catholic Church on July 25th, 1951. They bought and settled a half a mile west of the home place where they raised ten children. Feeding all those mouths took on a whole new look at what a mixed farm consisted of, with cows, chickens, pigs, horses, a massive vegetable garden, 1,500 hills of spice, Dad would say, holy moly. <laughs> Mom worked hard from dawn till dusk to keep all of us fed, clothed, healthy, and happy. Dad ended up farming with his brother Joe for many years. Uncle Joe was the one when we butchered any animal. Dad would have to call on him to shoot it because Dad said he just couldn't bring himself to do it. And that explains why whenever we would see a deer in the outdoors, Dad would always say, I just don't know how anyone could ever shoot them. They are so cute. <laughs> when it came to all the weddings in the family, three being in one year, Mom and Dad would be so grateful that they had cows and grain to ship off and sell. Dad was all about moderation, no matter what it was. He never went overboard on anything. Well, except music, of course, as there were times that he could outplay everyone in the band. His words were, 
there's got to be another song where that one came from. <laughs> he was always so conscious about his food intake and would always say, I sure don't want to bulge. <laughs> Whenever Dad received a compliment, he would reply, maybe I am getting a wee bit better with age. <laughs> We were raised with a strong faith foundation, and Dad enjoyed hanging out with his children and treated everyone as though they were the most important one in the family. After the grandchildren came into his life, he would always say, those grandchildren are just so intelligent these days. I don't think you could say fiddle or violin without thinking of John Beagle. He and Mom played in many country bands throughout their life. Throughout their life. They enjoyed golfing, curling, traveling, picking berries, and spending quality time with family. And he would always say in his later years that he was sure happy he and Mom traveled when they were still able to. Sundays was our family day, and that meant going to church. And if we were lucky enough, we would go to the dairy drive-in and grab an ice cream cone. We had picnics with yummy meter roasts, family baseball games in our yard. We would ride horses through the bush trails and go visit our many cousins. Dad and Mom retired off the farm when Dad was exactly 65 years of age and bought a farm in Fairview. The baby of the family and his wife, Jared and Janet, bought and moved on to the family farm where they started Dunbegin North. Mom and Dad spent 13 winters in Phoenix, Arizona, and once April rolled around, they were eager to get back home, as Dad would always say, you know, we sure don't live in the worst part of the world. <laughs> they continued to enjoy life to the fullest in their later years. Dad and Mom worked part-time at the laundromat, where he had, had his famous Coco Moco on tap. I truly believe that Dad was the inventor of the infamous Coco Moco. Half cup coffee and a half cup hot chocolate. And as he and Mom would frequent the a and the staff would have their hot drink ready for them. We could always see Mom and Dad walking hand in hand down the street. And we all know how much Dad loved to walk and stay active. I know there were many friendships made in those years, people stopping in at the laundromat all the time. Gerard and Janet's cabin down the river was Dad's reprieve to enjoy the outdoors, the flowing river, the many family gatherings, and the Green Valley. As the years went on, I would drive our Dunbegin North Band to play at lodges and care homes around the Peace Country for the years leading up to Dad's death, which was a month before he passed. His favorite line when sharing this with people was, we are going to play for the real old. <laughs> He brought apple turnovers from the AW and drove out to the farm where he knew Ken Zate's office now employed and his youngest son Jigger would be found there periodically. Lawrence, Jared, and Cheryl at Reynolds Plumbing would also experience these visits from Dad with apple turnovers in hand. Those moments made his last few months here on earth just that much sweeter. Making people happy and putting a smile on their face was a top priority in Dad's life. He was a shining light for all who came in contact with him, was totally selfless and humble, and his smile was captivating. At times, I would just sit and watch him and think, wow, Papa, our Lord is looking down on you and saying, John, my good and faithful servant. Our many special family gatherings we had for Mom and Dad, wherever we were and before anyone would leave, Dad would always say, you know, We'll never get together this young again. <laughs> Sister Betty, her daughter Nikki and John Street, spent six years in Fairview taking care of mom and dad and fulfilling their lives. Their favorite trip of all times was when Betty and John and family took them to Branson, the land of the old time music. They have never stopped talking about that incredible trip and their very special relationship with Betty and John while they were in Fairview. John was Papa's true, true friend and he's now celebrating life in heaven with him. He always had a jar of peppermint and worthers or a pocketful, which he would continuously hand out to sweeten your life because you know the sourness comes by itself. <laughs> Throughout the last six years of our dad's life, he endured many medical procedures, 
and he was always quite adamant about receiving any sort of treatment. In his own words, as long as I can keep kicking and scratching for a few more years. <laughs> and he would continually praise the medical field, saying, you know, they sure have come a long way in the medical field. <laughs> each, each and every trip family members made for one thing or another, Dad would continually remind us, I'm sure getting spoiled, or I'm getting guns for Gordon. <laughs> And, and then he would sneak a $20 bill in our vehicles or pocket somewhere for the gas. The week he left the Royal Alec, after getting a bad replacement, we were walking out of the hospital and a couple of the nurses stopped me and said, your dad should be teaching all of our husbands and young men what it takes to be a gentleman. Mm -hmm. True story. Mom shared with me such a, a, another cute story of dad. When Mom was in the hospital having Sister Karen, Dad was at home looking after six kids for almost a week. Well, when Mom got home, she said she looked at Dad and thought to herself, you look like you just had a baby. <laughs>
thinking that I was going downtown to buy him a blanket and he wanted to pay me back. So I put his mind at ease and told him that I was just getting a warm blanket at the hospital. This past July, Mom and Dad celebrated their 67th wedding anniversary. What a milestone and a testament of their love for one another. Mama, we are all so very proud of you for who you are and your strength, which has been a true gift of God, especially this last month. Papa wanted to make sure you were going to be okay without him, and he could only hear that confirmation from you. Bless you for that, and we love you so much. John Beagle is survived by his wife, Irene, his children, Carol, Marie, Bob, Betty, Lawrence, Agnes, Karen, Elaine, Marcel, and Gerard. 26 grandchildren, 24.5 <laughs> great-grandchildren, sisters, Trudy Dahl, and Agnes Beagle. He is predeceased by sisters Mary Dahl, Annie Ruther, Sabina Dahl, Brothers Frank Beagle, Joe Beagle, grandchild Corey and Irvine. In closing, our family would like to sing a song called Try a Little Kindness. We want to dedicate this song to our dad. Please listen carefully to the words as it is a true reflection of how our dad lived his life. Thank you all once again and blessings to you all.
consumed, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you. And even though their body lies lie in the earth, they trust that they, like you, will rise again. Will rise again. Give our brother John peaceful rest in this grave until that day when you, the resurrection and the life, will raise him up in glory. Then may he see the light of your presence, Lord Jesus, in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Since Almighty God has called our brother John from this life to himself. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. be served in the hallway out here. But to keep it served with some of the recollections and memories, I'd like to know how many folks in this room here play cribbage. In Brooklyn, um, we spent some really special time just Grandpa, the family, and I um, in Fairview when uh, we were going up to the Harvest Lodge to play music. And, um, when uh, we spent time with him and up in the hospital in his last days, we did a lot of singing, and uh, what a privilege it was to spend that time with such a beautiful, beautiful man, and what an inspiration he is. Something that was so special to me was being able to um, listen as Grandpa and Dad talk about the good old days out on the farm in Blue Sky, farming together. And it's just something that really stuck out to me so often they would speak of these times and of when Grandma would come out to the field with her fried cat, uh, fried fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy and the famous red cabbage on those farming days. And it just inspired me to uh, write something that I hope is a small tri tribute to his memory and the legacy that he left us. <laughs> The poem is called Golden Leaf Fields, and it's dedicated to my grandpa, John Robert Beagle, whose life and legacy are the inspiration. He straightened up tall as the sun beat down on the rich, dark soil behind him. He drew his rough hand across his sweaty brow and gazed o'er the field before him. I see it, son. Now ain't it nice. That thick field of ripe golden wheat. The curly-haired lad, he squinted and frowned. No, Dad, all I see is a black sheet. In time, my son, in time you'll know, said the man to the sunburned youth. Then the seeds we planted today will be golden wheat fields, sure as truth. 
Summer rains went, and summer suns came, and warm winds danced in the grasses. The father and son watched the sea sprout and grow, and walked through the tall golden masses. Harvest time came, the scythes were thrust in to reap the ripe harvest in time. Treat the land well, said the man to his son, and you'll see that it yields a gold mine. Sorrows and joys came and went. Time and care wrought with the years. Much change in the face of the farmer as happiness mingled with tears. But the youth never lost the bright vision his father had sent in his heart. Respect for the land and faith in God's plan, though simple, became his life's art. Then one day the farmer grew ill, and sensing his time would soon come, lay on his bed while his son stood beside him, clasping his hand in his own. <coughs> and we feel sad, he remembered, said the son with a tender smile. Then days in the field I loved him, and that waving wheat stretching for miles. Ah, sons, them were good days, full of bounty, hard work, sun and rain. Keep them alive in your heart and your home, for it's your turn to do it again. The farmer lay back on his pillow, closed his eyes with a look, oh, so sweet. I see it, son, now ain't it nice. It's God's field of ripe golden wheat. Mm -hmm.